But here's why we're talking about this. The Supreme Court said Medicaid expansion could not be forced on the states, and that has given Obamacare opponents the opening they've needed, if not to kill it off entirely, then at least to stall implementation and possibly force some significant changes. Possibly. As Anne Marie Berger reports, in the meantime, the health care challenges continue. Hi, Ms. Moore. Do you need refills on any of your medicines? Hello there. A morning packed with Hello. patients is typical for Dr. Heidi Miller, a primary care physician at Family Care Health Centers in St. Louis. Some people think that in primary care that um, you just serve as a referral gateway or um, you just take care of the sniffles. Mm -hmm. And today on my schedule, I've got 25 patients. Most of them I see often because they are so sick. And there's, there, there is not one easy, straightforward, healthy patient with a runny nose. You pass out. How are you feeling immediately beforehand? Miller's practice is a federally qualified health center and they take care of patients regardless of their ability to pay. Our doors are open to everyone. Uh, we take care of Medicaid patients, patients who don't have any insurance. We do some Medicare, a little bit of private, um, but we serve everyone. How much weight do you think you've lost from the beginning? Uh, over 50 pounds. It's amazing. Dr. Miller is passionate about her work and the need for access to primary care for all people. She says it's the key to prevent and stabilize life-altering illnesses. Patients with diabetes and high cholesterol and hypertension are at an extremely high risk for heart attack or stroke. So we are preventing or postponing that as long as we possibly can. Without this preventative care, without this primary care, this kind of patient can get extremely sick. It can impair their current ability to work and um, they can get so sick that they get some infection that they never would have gotten if they were on their insulin. They end up in the emergency room for a thousand or two thousand dollars and it was all preventable. I'm going to check your blood pressure. Access to primary times. care as well as specialty care depends on access to health insurance and Dr. Miller sees expanding Medicaid as the solution. Eligible Ryan Medicaid, Barker, Vice President of Health Policy at the Missouri Foundation for Health. So it's one of the biggest misconceptions that Medicaid is already covering all of our low-income citizens and that this is just an expansion to getting closer to middle-income Missourians, and it really isn't. This is an expansion to cover most of the low-income Missourians in our state. Estimates vary, but in Missouri, expanding Medicaid would make another 250,000 people eligible for health coverage. By raising eligibility from 19 percent of the poverty level, that's the lowest states can offer under the current system, to 138 percent. That's for an individual who makes up to $15,400 a year, a family of two just earning $21,000. A family of three would qualify for Medicaid if they make $26,344 or less. Dr. Miller's clinic does receive funding from federal tax dollars to offset the cost of their uninsured patients. And she is concerned about the quality of care they can continue to offer without Medicaid so, expansion. Cross, the, um, the EKG is not perfect, but it's not worse than it was last time. So one issue is how to deliver primary care. And we, will, we are already operating on a very, very, very efficient budget and that will get thinner if there is no Medicaid expansion. And it will be difficult to maintain all the services that we're able to provide now. We here in Missouri will not be stingy anymore. Dr. Miller isn't alone in her concern. As the legislature resumes in Jefferson City, many Missourians are voicing their support for Medicaid expansion. We put those people in office down there in Jefferson City to take care of us. And that's what they should be doing. Right. And we should hold their feet to the fire to get that done. Well, if Missouri chooses not to expand Medicaid this year, which they, very, they will choose not to expand it. State Senator John Lamping explains that opposition to Medicaid expansion stems not from a disagreement that all Missourians need access to good quality health care, but a difference of opinion on how to pay for it. And he says those details just aren't clear. 
what they've offered us is a contractual agreement uh, to enter into, but so many of the details of the contracts, the contract is actually still being written. So for example, when they say that, you, that they will cover 100% of the expansion's cost, well, it's been, it hasn't been determined yet what actually will or won't be covered. What does it mean? What, what is the cost of the Medicaid program as it expands all around the country to these higher levels? It sounds like the contract from the federal government is an all or nothing. As, as, exactly. So what's our plan? Our plan is to ask them to reconsider that proposition. While those both in favor and against Medicaid expansion believe the current system is broken, they cannot agree on how to fix it. Those opposed say we can't keep throwing good money after bad by expanding entitlement programs. And supporters say getting people health coverage is the best way to start reform. But Senator Lamping says expanding Missouri's minimum coverage will cost so much. And he's concerned the federal government won't be able to continue paying its share. What I'm being asked to consider, as I'm being asked to consider, and we, the General Assembly, have asked to consider, do you enter into this financial agreement with the federal government when at a time when you can question the, uh, the financial stability of the federal government. I'm concerned about the heart pressure, so I'm going to try to get you a stress test today. Either way, Dr. Miller faces difficult decisions. I would cringe at having to discriminate or alter care for a patient dependent on their ability to pay. However, right now it is a reality. So I look at the patient's name, I look at their date of birth, I look at their vital signs, and the extra vital sign is like, do they have insurance or do they not? Because it depends where I can send the prescription, it depends what tools I have accessible, and if the patient has no health insurance, I feel like my hands are tied.